mandolins. I mean, I started making mandolins pretty much at the start of my apprenticeship. I was making the, the bodies, the back and the sides, doing the prep work on the neck, that sort of thing, doing the machine carving, like roughing out the tops. So that was 1988. And when I worked for Stefan, we made so many of them. It was like a, 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 a bread and butter instrument uh, for us. Then about seven or eight years ago, I'd, I'd been making a sort of Sobel copy uh, for quite a few years. And I thought, oh, I want to try somewhere else. I wanted, I wanted to change the arch a little bit um, and make a bigger one. And I did the Celtic F and the Celtic O and, and I really good and I've sold a lot of them which is great um, but of course after a few years you want to you want to you want to you wanna apply what you've learned to what you did before which is what I've done I've come back with a sort of Sobel sized mandolin and put this arching on that I've that I use on the on the bigger mandolins um, and I'm, I'm really happy with how it's worked out uh, maple back and sides uh, it's actually a laminated uh, maple back and sides. The sides are laminated with New Guinea rosewood, and the back is laminated with a, its maple inside and out. And the core material is Western red cedar. You've got a Czech spruce soundboard. It was uh, I bought this stuff off a lad in Scotland, maybe two thousand and five, two thousand and six, something like that. Um, we went up to see him and picked through what was, uh, we, I picked the best stuff anyway that he had. I wasn't that struck with what he had, but some of it was nice and this is lovely. Um, it looks a bit like um, Adirondack. It's got that sort of colour variation that, you, that you're seeing out of Adirondack. Um, the neck is mahogany, really nice old mahogany with uh, ebony backstrap and an ebony head veneer. That uh, truss rod cover, that's, that's the new guinea rosewood. It's the same as what's on the, on the inside of the, of the ribs. Fingerboard's ebony. It's bound with rock light. You've got an ebony bridge with a, a bone saddle. Um, yeah, frets are, that's what I use on all my instruments. It's evil gold. Um, which is it's harder than nickel silver it's it's, it's great stuff um, the tuners are uh, Rubner satin tuners <laughs> but it's taken me I've been on for over an hour going backwards and forwards trying to get the level right on this on this thing because if it's loud enough for me to be heard this thing overpowers it uh, <laughs> it's distorts because it, it's there's lots of that going on you know um, in the bottom end but keep that sort of Celtic they call it sparkle that you'll get from a, a Sobel mandolin or one of the one of the many copies um, and I think I'm getting there um, when I compare this to even a decent old Gibson A model you know with a, with a oval hole the bottom end of them is often lovely but the treble ends just dead there's no there's no there when you get a good one, that, that, there's something nice about them, but they're not much use in a session. They're nice for playing by or selling the house with. But this I'm hoping has got a bit more to it. You've got the cut at the top. But what you can end up with 
with mandolins that are really low, it's um, it's low, but it's not very nice. It's not a very pleasant sound. There's just a lot of it. And what I'm trying to get is a tone that I really like, plus the the power to carry. Um, <laughs> So that's the latest, that's the latest development in the, in my mandolin empire. This is going to grow on the newsletter. It's quite possible by the time you've seen this video, I've already sold it. Um, but you know, if you want us to make, make your one, we can stick you on the list for next year. Um, and that'll be, uh, that'll be great. <laughs>